the, the textbook that you guys bought, the green technical graphics textbook, I forget exactly its name, came with a CD or DVD with another textbook on it. That textbook is where I'm getting some of this information from. Um, you won't find it in the green book. That's why I'm not having you bring the green book right now. Uh, today's stuff comes from chapter three, basically the idea of projecting points and then eventually it moves into lines and planes and so on. So if you want a textbook to reference, you can use that PDF and, and take a look at uh, chapter three in there. <clears throat> okay, so with that said, And let's talk about the projection of points. Now, as I mentioned the other day, if you get what we do today, then the rest of the semester, or at least the first half of the semester where we do similar stuff, should go pretty well. Uh, if you don't get what we're doing, then definitely ask for help so that I can help you out and make sure that you're on pace to pick up the other things as we go on from here out, on out. So. Uh, projecting a points, basically we're going to project 3D points onto a 2D plane. So we're going to do that in order to take a solid object and create all the necessary views of said solid object. Here's an example. Uh, this is not my favorite slide because it's really starting with a flat part and projecting to a flat plane. But uh, if there, was, there were more parts further back, then those just simply project to a plane to create an image, and that's basically what we're going to be doing. Although, to start out with, we're just going to be doing one point at a time. We're not going to do a solid yet. So we're going to start with points, then lines, and then planes as we go along. So basically, we're using the Cartesian coordinate system and uh, creating a, a graphical version of that, if you will. We can locate a point or anything else in space through three planes. So typically when we look at the AutoCAD screen, we're looking at X, Y, we're only looking at two coordinates. We need that third dimension to fully locate a point. So the point there is just one view is not enough. You need at least two views typically to fully describe an object. So we're using the X, Y, and Z planes and, we'll, and axes, and we'll talk more about those in just a moment in some slides coming up. But our three principal planes, or excuse me, our three main planes we refer to as principal planes. Let me get rid of this little thing here real quick. So, just to give you an idea here, on this uh, little box here, so if I have a box and I've got the front plane, the right side, the left side, which we call profiles, and then the rear of the box as well, the bottom and the top, which we call horizontal planes, those are our six principal planes. Today, we will really be focusing on these three planes. But for terminology standpoint, we call these our principal planes or principal views. Obviously, not everything can be described with those planes. And we'll get into auxiliary views next time. Like I said, I want to make sure we have a good foundation of what we're doing today. So here's a, a graphical representation of the X, Y, and Z planes. Again, we have the flat X, Y plane, and then Z is the third dimension coming up. So if I have a point on this grid, for example, and if the grid, each space was worth 10 millimeters, for example, then this would quite simply be 20 comma 20, right? 10, 20, and 10, 20. But that's not enough. I need to know where it is in that Z direction as well. So when I switch, um, or excuse me, let me switch forward here. I've just said that. And then as I mentioned, the XY planes also are horizontal. So think of the XY plane as a tabletop. And typically when you jump into AutoCAD, you're looking at the XY plane and your monitor is almost vertical. So uh, imagine that more is just like board drafting. It's laying down. XY is the flat top or bottom, but mostly we deal with the top of the box. And then Z is our vertical coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So same idea here with the top view, just projecting up to a plane to create a 2D representation of a solid object. And then if I take a look at the um, front view here, the front view has the X and the Z plane, or excuse me, the X and the Z axes. So X, Y is, again, the flat, Z is coming straight up. So if I'm on the front of the box, I'm dealing with the X and the Z axes. So again, if I have a grid of 10, then I've got 
20 over in the x direction, 20 up in the z direction. So now between those two views, I fully describe this point. I know where it is in the x, y, and z locations. Another important thing to note, which is pretty logical and hopefully pretty obvious, but the x value is the same as it is in the front view as it is in the top view. That doesn't change. Oh, I wish this would stop. There we go. Okay. So there's the front view again. Now if I want to deal with the side view, a profile view, could be a left profile, could be a right profile. I already know these two values from the other two views. I already saw the Y value in the horizontal one and I already saw the Z value in the front one. So I know exactly where this point is going to be located at. So functionally with what we're going to be doing in AutoCAD, what is important is that relationship, knowing that whatever the distance whatever x distance is in the front view is going to be the same in the top view. And we're going to be taking the, maybe measuring the x distance in the front view and applying it to the top view for example is what we'll be doing. Okay, so let's hop through there. Again, that's our profile plane, side view if you will. So here's the example of the little dice. So, we've got our front, our top or horizontal if you will, and our right or profile views. And basically we're just going to hinge those to show them unfolding. But again, taking a look at the colored arrows here, again stressing that these values are the same. So if you think of this little shape inside of a glass box, and we're talking about how far away from the front of this glass box is it. So it's Y units away from the front, so in the top, it's also Y units away from the top, or from the front, excuse me. This view we can't see, we can't see depth in this view. That's why we need these multiple views. The same thing with Z. Now, if you look at the Z here, it's showing me how far from the bottom of the box this is. On your drawings, instead of measuring from the bottom of this box, we measure from the hinge in between the two views. So as we unfold, basically we'll be measuring how far down from the top of the box is this point. And whatever this distance is, it's going to be the same over here. And then the X here, it's measuring over here from the left side, will typically be measuring over here from the right profile. How far away from the profile view or the right side is this box? And again, whatever it is here in the front, it's also in the top for the horizontal plane, if you will. So again, we're just going to unfold these guys to create our views. And then this is how things are going to be labeled and drawn in our drawings in this class. So we're going to have hinges between the views. They're going to have green phantom lines. And then we're going to label each view. Now initially labels will be created for you, but then when you have to start creating your own views, it's important that you label your views as you go. So you can see on this side of the hinge, it's the front plane. This side is the profile and this side is the horizontal. So you see the appropriate labels there. So again, I want to stress again the space between these. The space from here to there, away from the front plane, is the same as it is away from the front plane here. So uh, the height, obviously, space down from the horizontal plane lines up here as well. Even though I don't continue my horizontal line over here, it's the same idea. It's the same distance away from the top plane in each of these views. It's the same distance away from the profile plane or away from the right side view in both the front and the top. So if we could take one point and map it out everywhere and do it for every point, then we've got a solid. So if you guys saw my little cutout here just a moment ago, one thing I want to stress too about this little cutout is the fact that there's nothing up here. So remember that it's just basically a closed box and you're opening it, up, opening it up. There's nothing here. So there's no need to try to draw any sort of points up in this quadrant. Because again, you'll have these exercises with the profile lines drawn in for you, the hinge lines, I should say, excuse me. So here's just one point. This is a point in the box somewhere. Just further stressing what I was saying, but just using one point. And this point is called out in the top plane, the horizontal plane. First of all, know the labeling. Uh, you will lose points in this class if you don't label points properly. It's point A in the horizontal plane, so it's AH. And I can see that it's Y units back from the front plane, and it's X units away from the right profile plane. 
So then if I want to show that in another view, say the front, the x value is the same, right? It's still the same distance away from the right side. But now I've got the z value that tells me how far down from the top it is. So then if I want to show the right side view, I know the two values that I need. I need the z that tells me how far down from the top. And I also need this y that tells me how far from the front plane. So I can apply those two values in this view to show what that right side view would look like as well. And that's essentially what you're going to be doing on the exercises today. Taking a point, you're going to be given values for where it's located at, and you're going to locate it in the horizontal, the frontal, and the profile plane. So here's an example of, again, what one of your exercises is going to look like today. You're given point A, and you're told that the x direction is 15 millimeters. So remember on, on my top view, x is this way, y is this way. So it's 15 millimeters away from the profile plane. The y, it's 10 going this way. And the z, it's 25 coming down in the front. Now, in the exercises, you won't just be given x, y, and z. I specifically tell you it's 15 millimeters down from horizontal, or it's 25 millimeters to the left of the profile. So that'll help spell out what you need to do on those. So let me summarize some ideas and then we'll do uh, a couple of these together. So we've got six total principal views. Again, we've got the horizontals, which are the top and the bottom, and then our elevations, which are the front, back, left, and right side profiles. So there we go. Uh, just a, a bit of terminology that we'll use a little bit more. Adjacent views are views that are hinged to each other and related views are views that are adjacent to the same intermediate view. So. What that just basically means is, let me hit the right button here. These two are adjacent, these two are adjacent, these two share the same intermediate view, so they're related, and we get the spaces the same in each one. So, however far back away from the front, back away from the front are going to be the same. Okay. And then again, we saw these as well. So I'm gonna switch back to AutoCAD. So if you haven't launched AutoCAD already, please go ahead and do so. Oh, I finally found out what that stuff was called. Oh yeah? It was AutoCAD, it was AutoCAD Oh, okay, used Inventor, cool. I'm going to uh, let me see if I can change my resolution so it looks a little better. Give me just a minute. That looks better. Okay, so once you're in AutoCAD, if you'll go ahead and open up a new drawing. So again, you can go up and just hit the new blank drawing button. And then just do the ACAD template for now. And then just right click on your screen and go to options. And then you're gonna set your profile current. So Derek, since you weren't here the other day, obviously you don't have a profile. I'll help you set all this stuff up in a few minutes, okay? So find your profile in there, double click on your name, and click OK. And once again, what that does for us is now we've got our shortcuts. And any color settings, that sort of thing we want. And so as I mentioned the other day, the workflow for this class is you'll typically start a new drawing based on a template, and then you'll save it to your class folder, and then you'll work on it. Usually what I have is I have some sort of sample file for us to do together that's similar to the exercises you're going to do. And so we'll do that together. And if you get left behind a little bit, you can just kind of stop and observe and then I can come around and help you afterwards if you want. Um, but I'll try to leave enough time that you can do this along with me. So um, if you guys will all go to new, just click your new button up on your quick access toolbar. And then if you have your profile current, you should see your folders over here on the left. You should see your templates 
folder. Okay, so, sorry about that. I think we are we're all in the same spot now. So if we go to new and then templates, and I wanna stress again that you use the new command, not open. You should be seeing the word select template here in the title bar. And then you'll see a folder called additional files. Just double click on there. And then you should see one called point to practice. Go ahead and double click on that to open it up. Now you won't be turning this one in to me, but just to get the basic workflow done, let's go ahead and now save this to your class folder. So we'll just go up and click save. On the quick access toolbar, click on your class folder over here on the left side. And then you can just go ahead and call it point to practice. So what I've got here is two sample points that we're going to locate. You're going to locate point A over here on the left side and point B over here on the right side. Now the exercises you'll actually do to turn in today, you're going to do multiple points on each one. So you'll do two points over here and two points over here. Uh, but we'll keep it simple to begin with. So if we look up here at the instructions, locate point A, 45 millimeters to the left of P, 37 millimeters behind F, 30 millimeters below H. First thing I want to point out, you don't have to type in millimeters or anything like that when we're doing this. Second, we're going to use the offset command in order to lay out our construction lines. And third, you might want to change your layers for what your construction lines are going to be in. Right now, if I offset this green hinge line, it's going to be a green hinge line over here and it might be kind of confusing. So I'm going to uh, show you first of all that we can change our layer up here instead of points. Perhaps I want to use projection lines. These gray lines will work fine. And so the command of choice that we are going to be using is offset. So we should find the offset in the modify section here. You can also type O and enter. So when you start the offset command and take a look at the command line, before I put in the distance, I want to choose this layer option so that I offset into the current layer. I'm going to click on layer and then current. So now it's asking me for my offset distance. So the first one is 45 millimeters to the left of P. So I'm going to type in 45 and press enter. Then I'm going to come down and anywhere that I see the letter P, I'm going to offset away from it. So try not to get hung up on the terminology of to the left of P. Because quite honestly, when I start making auxiliary views and things like that, it might say left of P, but you actually go to the right on your screen. So don't think in terms of left, right, up, down. Think away from. So anywhere that you see a hinge with the letter P on it, you're going to click on that hinge and click away from that letter P. So in this case, it happens to be to the left. So you should end up with the construction line over here to the left. So far, so good. So our next instruction is that point A is 37 millimeters behind the front plane. So once again, I'll start the offset. It remembers the layer setting, so you don't have to do that again. So I'll do the offset, type in the value of 37. Behind F, or away from F. So anywhere you see a hinge with the letter F on it, offset away from the F. So I'll click on this top line here and offset above it. Over here on the right side, here's an F. So I'm going to click on this line and offset to the right. And we'll escape to cancel that. So now we need that Z value. So if we look at that last line there, it's 30 millimeters below the horizontal plane. So again, we'll offset. And then we're going to go 30 meters below horizontal. So I'll type 30 and enter, and then we'll click this hinge line and click below. So anywhere there's an H, we're going to go 30 millimeters away from it.
So far so good? I should now have all my intersections for my points. A couple things I want to point out. Right up here is one of the intersections and it has a break in the line type and you should still be able to pick that up using the snap to intersection. Sometimes you'll have a problem with it. If that happens you can override the line type and, and make it a solid line if you want. Um, and you could do that just by selecting the lines and then choosing properties. Now again, your properties, since you've got wide screens, you, can, you should be able to see it better than me. You probably don't have to click the drop down. But I can see it's using the Phantom 2 line type. I can just change that to by layer to get a solid line if you want. That way you can see the intersection a little better. Not totally necessary. The object snap should pick it up. But I'll show you that just in case. All right, so now I want to draw my points. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into my points layer before I draw these. And now to draw the point, we'll either type in PO or we'll click the draw panel drop down. And the point button is right here, multiple points. Now, assuming that snap to intersection is on, you should be able to come into each intersection and place a point. If intersection is not turned on, then you want to use your object snaps down here at the bottom. If you need help with that, let me know. But I can snap here, <coughs> snap at this intersection, and snap at that intersection. I should not snap in this intersection because remember this is just the empty space after I unfolded the box. So there's nothing up here. So once you have your three points located, you can go ahead and erase your construction lines. Just be careful not to erase the points that you just drew. Again, you can just hit delete after you have those. One of the reasons why I like you guys to use that option to offset into the current layer is this step right here where you delete the construction lines. A lot of times people will accidentally delete the hinge lines, which really goofs a bunch of things up. So it helps give some visual clarity of what's what. Now, this assignment is not done yet. You must properly label your points. So it's point A, and then we have A in the horizontal plane, A in the frontal plane, and A in the profile plane. So using the multi-line text tool, so using the multi-line text tool, you can just simply choose the text tool, and then basically like you're creating a rectangle next to the point, just pick two diagonal points to make a little text box. And then we'll label it Please do caps A H for A in the horizontal plane. And then you can just click away from it. Now, technically, we usually label them with subscripts with a tiny little H behind it, but we're not going to spend the time to set that up every time. It's we, we get the label. That's all we really need. So then I'll have the same thing for A F and A P. Now, I'll show you a little trick. You can do one of two things. You can use the text tool every single time, or you can copy this label and then edit it, which is what I like to do, but either way is fine. So if I select this label, I can choose the copy command, which is up here in the modify area. And it's gonna ask me for a base point. I'm gonna click on the point as my base point. So I've got snap to node turned on click on that point. Then I can go ahead and snap to that point and snap to that point. Then I can just escape to cancel out. Now I can double click on this label and change the H to F for front. And then I can double click on this last label and change the H to P for profile. Personally, I like this better. If I'm doing production work, I like the labels to look nice and uniform. So I like copying the one because they're all in the same spot and it looks nice and uniform. The big thing is though, if you do use the copy method, make sure you remember to edit the labels because I'll often get them turned in and all three say AH 
and two of them are wrong then. So if you do copy, make sure you uh, edit the labels. And if you couldn't quite do that along with me and you want to see it again later, uh, when I come around, feel free to ask me and I'll help you guys out. Okay, so let's try another one. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. So um, I'm still in the points layer, so I'm going to be offsetting into the points layer, which isn't the end of the world, but while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and switch into the projection lines layer. Okay, so now offset 31 to the left of P. So we'll do offset 31 and enter. Then anywhere there's a P, we're offsetting away from it. So here's the hinge. We're going to the left away from the P. And then escape. Next up, 15 millimeters behind the front plane, behind F. So anywhere there's an F, we're going away from it 15. So offset, then 15 and enter. So I'll choose the hinge between the front and the horizontal and go up away from the front. And then over here on the side, to the right, away from the F. Usually the biggest problem is just going the wrong way with your offsets. So just remember you're going away from that letter. Finally, the Z direction, the horizontal 22 below H. So we'll go offset 22 and enter. Grab the green hinge and offset down. Away from the H. Now I should be able to switch to my points layer and then draw in the multiple points at each of those three intersections. Again, remembering that there is no space up in the upper right quadrant. That's just empty space floating out there. There's no point up here. And then we can delete our construction lines. And then you can label. So again, you can create your own labels from scratch, or you can copy an existing one. I'm just going to copy this A over. And then I'm going to edit them. So that's B in the horizontal, B in the frontal, B in the profile. So I'll come around and see how that's going for you guys. So a couple things about the offset command, there's no way to change the value in the middle of it. So when you are switching between the different points, you just kind of have to restart the command each time. All right, so, so far so good? Yeah. Well, that's basically it for the concept of the day. Like I said, we're going to take that and do more things with it, do crazy auxiliary views at crazy angles, do lines, do planes. Uh, we're going to do a lot more with it. but. I want to give you guys an assignment and have you turn it in and grade it first before we go any further just to see if there's any issues. So it's one thing when you're doing it along with me, it's another thing when it's your turn to do it yourself. So you can go ahead and save this one. This might be useful to you to reference back to at any point in time. Um, exams, I always let you look at past assignments and the book and handouts, things like that, and slides. Um, so. What I would like you to do today is I've just got one exercise for you in which you're going to be plotting four points. So if you'll go to New, and then your Templates folder, then we are going to do points one today. So again, as soon as you get into points one, go ahead and save it to your class folder as points one. So go up and hit save. Make sure you click on your class folder if necessary and call it points one. And then also another reminder down here at the bottom of your screen to put your name in. The easiest thing to do is just double click on the name text to get into the text editor and then just use the right arrow of your keyboard to get to the right and then go ahead and just add your name in 
Oh, what did I do there? And then click away from it. Again, you don't have to put in the date. If you need any help with that, let me know. So if you take a look at the instructions for these, um, you're actually going to do, you're going to map two points together on the same little chart here. So you're going to do point A, and there's the values for point A. So you'll have points A, F, A, H, and A, P. And then you'll also have points B, F, B, H, and B, P. So my biggest recommendation to you is don't lay out all six points and then try to label it. You're going to mess the label up. Do all the A's and label the A's. Do all the B's, label the B's. And then over here, you're going to have points C and D. Again, just additional values. So you'll end up basically with, with 12 points, which is what this assignment is worth. So there should be two points in each view. I also conveniently put the instructions in the upper right quadrant to help you remember that you don't need to place any points up there in the upper right quadrant.